Well, happy Sunday, everybody. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Alice Readoms, and I am the spiritual director here. We had so much fun on Friday night. Who was here on Friday? Yeah. It was a blast. Our very first ever OC's Got Talent. And I want to say that one of the biggest thrills for me was watching our very own Reverend Karen Allen really do her ministry in creative arts. She really brought it together beautifully. Thank you. And so we're going to take a cue from Friday night, and we're going to do things a little differently, and we're going to be a little creative today. And I'm going to um, share this platform with a friend of mine. Let me tell you a little bit about Reverend Michelle Wadley. She's with us here today because we're going to the Asilomar Conference that is yeah. up in Pacific Grove. Some of us will be, jo be joining me up there. And um, I first met Michelle Wadley at Asilomar, I believe. She was doing a workshop. There were people milling around. She was, she was doing this kind of free form spiritual practice and and in, she was surrounded by all these beautiful souls in the middle of it. And I, and I watched her, and I was so inspired by the work that she did. Some of you know this story, that I began to stalk her. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Maryland. She was in New Jersey. Close enough, right? <laughs> and so I would go up to her church and take workshops with her and her community. And very much... Who I am today as a minister has been shaped by this beautiful soul. She has, um, sorry, my phone is ringing. <laughs> she, <laughs> right, well, of course it is, right? Doesn't matter who it is, it was God, although I think it was a car salesman. So, <laughs> God too, God too. Um, we, very, as I was saying, very much everything that I've done has been very much shaped by my relationship with this beautiful soul. And so as we're going to talk about passion and purpose, I can't think of a better person to come up and share this stage with me as we talk about this. Let's bring up Reverend Michelle Wobby. Hey, darling. Hi, how are you? Hey, let's do this. Yep. OK. That'll work Hi, for everybody. me. <laughs> um, so, so our theme this month is purpose and passion. And we're going to bring the idea of joy into that, and I'm going to ask Michelle some questions, and we're going to have a little dialogue, but we're going to share all that with you as well at the same time. And so when I think about passion and purpose, it feels like a really big thing that, that is almost like a mountain we have to climb, and sometimes it feels like life doesn't really make room for us to step into our passion and our purpose. And so, Michelle, what, what gets in the way of passion and purpose? Uh, a couple things, I believe. Uh, one is, the, and there's a word that's not in that theme that sometimes gets thrown in together. People think that if you have your passion, a passion becomes your purpose so you can make a profit. <laughs> and, I think, and I think that could be a dangerous thing sometimes. I think there's some passions you have that should remain sacred as passions. Because sometimes, not always, when that passion, when you, when you believe the passion is a purpose for the point of profit, it can, it can really get in the way of you being the artistic you know, being that you want to be with whatever that is. You know? um, one of my passions is food and cooking, and we've been in the restaurant business our whole life, you know, many of my people in my family. But the truth is, it, it, I just enjoy, I, cook, I like feeding people. So that doesn't mean that I necessarily want to go through the, all the steps it would take to suddenly do it on a bigger scale, because there's no quicker way to lose your joy than to try to make money. So I, I want to speak to that so that you, we separate that out, so you don't think one is automatically the other. And I, I have a couple people that buy me that every time I'm a doodler. I'm not an artist, but I'm a doodler. And people will say, oh, you should sell them. No. no. <laughs> I should just have fun. So fun is a good thing. But the other thing, and I know this was the point that we, you know, we had discussed much of, that when you were young, and for, for, those of you, um, for those of you who 
manage to stay in touch with your passion. God bless you, that's a good thing. But I guarantee in this room, there are many of you without realizing have allowed yourself to succumb to the, to the tamping down of your passion and tamping down of believing in yourself that happened not all at one time. Sometimes it feels like we woke up as adults and we didn't know what the heck we're doing and we're not in touch with things. It feels that way, it feels very radical, like it just happened, like, you know, like what am I supposed to be doing? But the fact is, if you're in your years, your later years, that you have been over time, we have been, I'll say we, because I know I've, I've done it, that over time, in little bits and pieces, because life didn't necessarily affirm you. You didn't necessarily have a cheerleader. So what happened is you didn't, you, you in the opportunities or some of the challenges, that you dulled something. You, you very likely have dulled your light because to not dull your light was too challenging and scary. So it's, it's, it's years of dumbing yourself down. That's really what I'm saying. And you didn't do it on purpose and you didn't do it, you didn't do it because you wanted to. But we, a lot of us run to, to survive. Anybody know that feeling? You're just trying to survive. And so it, our, our survival mechanism has us avoid certain things. You know, <laughs> again, I, I have zero talent when it comes to music, I love music. I have music on all the time. Can't sing my way out of a paper bag. And I remember one time back in the day, some of you are gonna remember this. It was an album by Sammy Davis Jr. I can't remember what the album was called. And I had, remember, I had memorized every word of every song in that album. And I just thought I was all that sing. I was young, I don't know, nine, 10, I was young, I was little. And there I was singing and thinking, oh, everybody was enjoying, enjoying me in my home. <laughs> my father basically told me I should really not sing. <laughs> it's funny, right, it's funny, but but that's what happens. So the survival, and now whether or not I'm supposed to sing or not, doesn't matter. But that's what happens. And then there's this internal dialogue, because the, out, the outside dialogue becomes an internal dialogue. And then I dumb down even any possibility or wish or hope, because it, it wasn't comfortable. Do you understand? Mm. So w this is what we do. We, we want to survive in the moment. We don't realize that 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 decision to survive in an uncomfortable moment becomes a lifetime of dulling our passion and our purpose. Mm -hmm. And so it is so important that we, we have a reboot mm -hmm. whenever we can to reboot and to not think that you know who you are. Because I guarantee many of you don't know who you are. You know only who you have become to survive what is. Mm. But if you could stop thinking you know who you are and really ask, who am I meant to be? What, what, if, I, if I could live fearlessly, what would that look like? And then you'd have new answers, new answers coming up. But it's because you think you know you and you don't. You just know the result of decades of quieting down the pain and the discomfort. You know, thank you, Michelle, because that is such an important point. It reminds me of this um, wonderful book uh, uh, called The Great Leap, right? I wanted to ask you about that this morning. I wanted to see. <laughs> yes, the, absolutely. Right, and in that book, um, name of the Gay author. Gay Hendricks. Gay Hendricks. Um, it's a great, you know, on the cover of the book, you see this little tiny fish bowl and this big fish bowl, and the little fit goldfish is jumping out of the little fish bowl into the big fish bowl. And there's this really cool matrix inside the book that Gay talks about, about the different levels that we live at as we're moving through life. And he has the, the level of incompetency, that place where you are never going to be, I don't know, I'm never going to be a singer. I'm totally incompetent when it comes to singing. Saying, yes, yes, we have that in common. The, and then, Unless we're alone and then we could do it together. That's right. Oh, man, you were singing in the shower this morning. 
Um, and then uh, you have the level of competence. And those are the things that you do pretty well. They come pretty easy, but it's not necessarily your passion. We, the next matrix in, in the square in the matrix is the, the level of expertise. And sometimes we can step into a place where we're feeling really expert, but it's still not our passion. It's still not the place that really, uh, where we've really come to who we've come here to be. And I can tell you from personal experience, I spent 30 plus years in my level of expertise as an accountant. But it, the next box is, your, is the, the zone of genius. Zone of genius. Mm -hmm. Right, the zone of genius. And the zone of genius, what I'll say about that is sometimes we're, we don't give ourselves permission to live in that place of genius. And genius is where, when you're doing it, you lose track of time. Mm -hmm. It feels organic. It comes naturally to you. It's a, it's a place where you don't have to go out and get a bunch of skills. Instead, there's something that you pick it up like this and it just expresses by means of you. But it's scary. And so that place that Michelle was talking about, feeling like you had to survive and have to dumb down. And, and uh, for me, it's been, I needed to feel a sense of control. And in the in that zone of expertise, I have a lot of control, you know, because I'm, it, it helps to, helps me to have a greater sense of my own worth and it gives me confirmation and validation, but I'm not an accountant type of personality. My personality is much more organic and free flowing and structure is, you have a whole different voice. That you have an accountant voice. Yeah, yeah, I do. And when she talks numbers, there's a whole different, like a different Any, personality. Anybody see that? Anybody here see that? <laughs> it's a whole different personality that I drop <laughs> into. It's not who I am. And when yeah. I began to step out of that zone of expertise and step into the zone of genius, man, it was like a weight had been lifted and I felt free. And so when we're talking about passion and purpose, we're talking about not extra work, not struggle and strife and climbing that mountain. We're talking about stepping into an authenticity that just sets you free. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. that, that, that whole book is, I think you're the one who intro introduced me to that yeah, it's book. A great, if you haven't, if you have never read it, it's The, uh, the Big Leap. I really do encourage it. Really, Did I call it The Great Leap? No. Yeah, I think you did, right? Yeah. The big leap? Oh, the, the big, big leap. The big leap, yeah. Oh, I, I, yes, you did. I, <laughs> yes, I'm, you did. I'm famous for renaming things. <laughs> she makes works up words yeah, up I all do. the time. I, I call them Alicisms. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, um, so what do we do, uh, Michelle, when we, when we begin to realize that we're not allowing ourselves to be fully authentic? You know, um, Michael Beckwith has made, has gotten famous and made a lot of money on his, you know, this whole visioning, the visioning um, process. But the truth is visioning has been going on for a millennium. There are shamanic cult and shamanic cultures and other cultures that they, they just call it dreaming. And dreaming is, is the, the, that state of dreaming is where you ask a question, you live in the question, and you allow it. With, you don't necessarily need all the questions. It's great if you do all that envisioning. As a, I created my community out of nine months of, of a visioning process with a group of people. And the magic, the magic that happened. I, I mean, I could tell that story at another time. But, but I, wanna, I wanna say to you, it's not, it's not a newfangled, new thought, new age thing. It's a mystical, an old mystical practice. And the, and the thing is to trust. It's to ask the question and then quiet the mind. Not with, you don't need a big process. You don't need a great amount of questions or procedures. Just, to, I call it living in the question. Because so often when I would be visioning on a regular basis, often the question, the answer didn't come when the question was asked. I'd be, I'd be driving, matter of fact, the, 
we have an opening uh, statement that we use in my community in New Jersey. And that opening statement was a complete, a complete download word for word, and we have never stopped using it. And it came out of a visioning process, out of me dream, and it wasn't, you know, I'll say dreaming, because I simply asked the question and allowed. And I wanted to know, well, how, we do, how do we want to communicate our, who we are being to the, to the community at large when they came in? And download. And some of my best things that have happened have been downloaded. But what we, and what I mean by that is getting quiet long enough. We had a, I don't know if you were there for the first rally. We did a weekend yes. rally. Because, you know, a Silomar, it, it's lovely, but it's expensive. And um, people on the East Coast don't always want to spend all the money they can, you know, they can, that they'd have to spend to come. So I had this big idea one time. Let's do, the, let's do a mini Silomar in one weekend. We brought in Jamie Lula, Ken Gordon, John Waterhouse, um, uh, uh, Kathy, um, Hearn. Kathy Hearn. Um, I mean, we, we pulled out the stops. You know, it was fantastic. And then one of my keynotes was James Mellon. He suddenly, it was before he got sick, all of a sudden, like two, three days before, my keynote, okay, and he's, he's doing a keynote and he's doing a workshop. He can't come, and I'm like, so, <laughs> so thank God we had a replacement for the keynote, but this person wasn't interested in doing a workshop. And I sat my butt down in my chair in my bedroom, and I said, God, I got nothing, but I'm not getting up till you give me something. And there was a download. I was there a little bit, not too long, when an entire workshop program was literally gifted to me. And that's how I know when I'm on my purpose. When I sit and I'm willing to receive, and I'm willing to not know, and I'm willing to not be attached to outcome, and I'm willing to not even have to guide it. So if you, if you talk about how do we do that, you have to be willing. There has to be a willingness and not, not think, oh, what am I going to do? But what, what's right for me? And these kind of questions, when you live in these questions, spirit will provide. Your purpose will be known. The inspiration will come. There's no way it doesn't. Why? Because it is the nature of God to create. God, its entire nature is to create and then to recreate more out of itself. And one of my favorite Three words in the textbook is create or perish. So if we're in that state of to create, if we're in that state, what can't coexist in that space is fear, doubt, self-denigration. Those habits, it's like your your the thing, the skit you your I don't know if he's here, the man did at your Bali thing and that you did at the talent show. Reverend Alice showed me the skit that she did, what was it called? Um, it was a customer service skit. Customer service, yeah, customer right. service skit. And I was trying to download love. Right, right. Mm. Because for that example, love and self-doubt can't coexist. So we, we entertain and we, we allow and we accept inspiration, but, but recognizing that when something else starts to creep in, that's when we do have to do our spiritual practices because they can't coexist. Doubt and fear does not exist when you're trying to be in the zone of genius. There's no room for it. Your passion must be expressed, but the way to do that is to make sure that we don't entertain the demons, as the Christians would say, get thee behind me, Satan, right? Get thee behind me, Satan, which is what is that you're getting behind? Fear doubt, questioning, worry, those things, we, the, it should be almost a, a, a law against us as religious scientists. I still call us religious scientists. There should almost be a law against that mm -hmm. because those, those are killers of spirit like nothing else. And, and when I think about 
the process, right? Because it is a process. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you have this idea in your head that you've been carrying around for 20, 30, 40 years, and it's not serving you. It's keeping you small. It's keeping you contained. It's keeping you trying to control things. And when you have to let that go, I mean, sometimes the, you know, I've heard p patients have talked about being in chronic pain, and when the, when the pain starts to go away, it's almost like an old friend, even mm -hmm. though it didn't mm -hmm. serve them. And so one of the things that I like to think about is when we're working with our belief systems, when we're working with those things that have been an obstacle for us, we can begin to crowd them out by mm. taking control of our thinking, by beginning to really look at those places that aren't serving us. And it, it, it takes a little effort. You know, I, I've, I've had the life experience where I'm walking around and every thought is popping into my head and I'm not paying attention to it. And, and it's not fun. <laughs> it is not fun. But by coming to this philosophy and beginning to do the practices that are inherent to our teaching, I learn how to be friends with my mind and, and how to be the captain of my thinking as opposed to being the victim of it. And so this idea of, I mean, spiritual mind treatment. Did we have fun last m week when we d did the whole talk and the prayer wall and we really talked about the power of prayer? Did anybody else enjoy it as much as I did? Yeah. yeah. That technique, I like to think of it as a spiritual technology. It, it's an opportunity for us to begin to really infuse our mind with the allness of God in the form of prayer. And that prayer moves our mind and moves our thinking into the direction that we choose. And Mary said it beautifully in her treatment. It's what we choose, and we don't realize that we have choice. And so spiritual mind treatment, affirmations, those are all really, um, I would say, stalwart spiritual tools that you should have in your sp toolbox while you're on this this trip, and uh, I would say that uh, no matter how long you've been around this teaching, I would venture to say you have to keep that st toolbox nearby. I, I haven't become sainted yet. <laughs> I'm trying to buy a new car. Boy, do I need spiritual mind treatment as I'm moving through that process <laughs> because I have a cultural belief, this huge body. We all, like if I said to you, oh yeah, I'm dealing with a car salesman, What's your first thought? Don't say it out loud. <laughs> don't say it out loud. Now, some of you have healed. You don't have that experience. <laughs> I am sadly have not, but I'm much better than I used to be. And that's because I use spiritual mind treatment. I use affirmations, and I pay attention. As Emma Her Curtis Hopkins once said, stand guard at the portal of your mind. There is no thing, this is, you've heard this, Thousands of times, thousands of times. I guarantee when uh, Reverend Heather was here and whoever has been on the stage, you've heard this. There is no thing, no way to create outside of consciousness. And here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear myself down, but just for the purpose of the example. Because I entered ministry of, uh, without education. Now they require you have a BA before you go into ministry, and they have all these requirements and standards. I slipped in before that, <laughs> all right? You do, you know? And thank God for that, um, because I didn't know what I didn't know. But here's the, here's the thing. I am so stubborn. That's part of my Jersey Girl personality. But I'm so stubborn, I am not going to let Certain ideas keep me from doing what I want to do. I'm just not. And even, I mean, I, I talk to people all the time. I, I do coaching and counseling and students and classes and all over the place and, you know, other ministers. And I can't tell you the amount of people that I have spoken to who always says, oh, I want to write a book. You know the difference between someone who wants to write a book and someone who does? They just do it. They just say, I won't say it, but they say, screw this, and they just do it. <laughs> and so I have been one to challenge what was the perception of my limitations all through my ministry. 
I'm not an author. I'm not educated. I, when I first got into ministry, I didn't even want to respond. You are on an author. The, I didn't even want to respond on the listserv because I was so afraid of my English and my grammar. Literally, I'm telling you, that's how, that's how horrified I was. But what I, this, is what, this is what changed. I didn't go to school. I, got, I did get some counseling, um, tutoring, before I entered ministry. I did get some tutoring. I wanted what I wanted so much that I hung on to that and allowed my consciousness to expand. And as my consciousness expanded, so did my understanding and my intelligence. They are, that one runs right behind the other. If you think you don't know, take more time to meditate. Because that is the portal to the genius that exists everywhere. And nothing, nothing can stop you if you sit still long enough, you listen deeply enough, and allow it to be moved. And so, I mean, I produced a number of books, call them books, whatever, that were like, ah, 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 you know. But then, what, as I continue to allow myself to do it, I finally created something that I felt really, that I do feel really good about. But that's because I got out of the way. We, you, I, our opinions about ourselves, we have to get out of our way and allow for the presence of the one loving God to download its genius in, through, and as us. And then we'll know what our purpose is. And then we'll touch that passion. Whether you want to make profit or not on it, that's up to you. But don't think of it as a requirement. But boy, you want to be alive? Just ask spirit, what is mine? And then shut up and listen. The shutting up part is a really important part of it. I, I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. This has been really wonderful to share the platform with you this yeah, morning to talk welcome. about this. Um, such an important part of our spiritual evolution. And so I think, why don't you, um, well, first of all, let's thank Michelle for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Will you pray us out? I will. And I, I have one more thing about the Great Leap, by the way, I want to just say the big leap. In there, he mm -hmm. speaks about something called Einstein time compared to Newtonian time. It is worth, the whole book is worth that piece alone because it'll shift your sense of timing in the world. It's fascinating. Oh, I got kissed. <laughs> All right, so let us know together right here, right now, that there is a power, a presence, a love. It is grand, it is glorious, it is all-consuming, it is everywhere present, and it shows up in, through, and as each one here now and each one that will hear at another time. What I know is that there is a reality, and this reality is the reality of our true expression, un unencumbered by doubt and fear. There is nothing that spirit wants more for, for and from each of us than to accept and allow for the movement, for the creativity, because the genius that exists everywhere exists as us. Can you believe that? Yes. yes. Can you allow it? Yes. Can you accept it? Yes. Then that acceptance is your covenant with the beloved one. Oh, and then movement happens and shifting happens and creativity happy happens. And the glory of the beautiful one that did create all will continue to create in, through, and as you. I am so grateful for the place where God resides within, how it governs and moves my life. And with a bounty of gratitude, I release this word to love, to law, and to the awe of life itself. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you.